just on the internet talking shit. Like, if that's who I am, if that's what you think I am, then fuck you, go away, and be somewhere else. Getting red. If you're a real hustler, you sure to get red. Voice, voice is who I'm working with on the, you know, African-American market. Get the side hustle so that, you know, you can get off the corporate plantation. Hey, what's going on, everybody? How you doing? I'm Dr. Boyce Watkins from the Black Business School and the Black Wealth Bootcamp. You know, one of the big death traps that we push people into um, is that trap of sort of uh, feeling like you have to give your whole life to the corporate plantation or, you know, and, 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 and also feeling like, you know, when you're not at the plantation, you're supposed to be chilling. You're not supposed to be doing anything. Uh, of value or, or of relevance for your life. Hundred dollars. You got to go back and forth with you for a hundred dollars. You're supposed to be able to just peel that off, boys. I I I I, I don't know. You know where the money. Um. Oh uh, well. I, I'm I'm not my priority to get you paid. I'm gonna get you paid. I'm gonna get you paid, pal. I'm gonna get you paid. Um. Did you send your invoice? What you mean invoice? We do PayPal. What you mean? No, but, but okay. Well, let me get you hooked up with the person that's gonna pay you. Okay. Well, all right. Okay. Well, she said she ain't get your invoice. A hundred dollars, nigga. A hundred dollars. We ain't talking about no big money. Like you be running around talking like she was asking for twenty. Yeah, it was twenty thousand. I had to get it straight. It was twenty thousand. A hundred dollars. You don't got a hundred dollars. Stop running around and talking about. This man said he gonna teach your kids how to be millionaires. And he don't got a hundred dollars. Arneal, back in the day, I offered her a job because she was scrambling around trying to get little articles written or whatever. I was able to pay her. I said, a black man will pay you, and I'm gonna make sure you can write whatever you want to write about. You can say whatever you want to say. Now, she pushed the envelope because she attacked Farrakhan on my platform, and I didn't like that. I said, we, come on now. We, you can't do that. Like some people, somebody asked me, like, the reason, the reason, why did you stop working with boys? Because he stopped paying me. I mean, you didn't even tell me that you stopped paying me. I had to hunt down your assistant. Knew he wasn't paying, I suspect either. Probably, but then when I hunted down her and I said, hey, I didn't get paid this month, $1,200 a month. What can you do with $1,200 a month working full time? That's what I was getting paid. And I hunted her and I said, hey, I didn't get paid this month. And she said, we ain't got no money. You know, okay, you might say Boyce didn't pay you as much as you wanted to get paid, but did Boyce ever, like, make, make promises and break them? I worked with Boyce for the past, like, five years, up from, like, late 2010 to, like, 2016. That's for that's how long I've worked with Boyce Watkins. I helped build that platform. Put up the clip. Put up that clip. You see that clip right there? That's me. That's on Boyce's platform. That's over 100,000 views. That's real money. That's real money. I didn't get any of that money because I was believing in the cause. I thought you were political. We talked about Barack. We talked about him. I didn't know you were going to get up and run away. Talk about the back door. You walk out the back door. You done got all my people to invest in this crypto, this very unstable currency that I call an unstable currency. I told y'all this thing was going to fall. I told y'all it was going to take a nosedive. And y'all told me I was negative. Now, what? say, what's the difference between electronic money and like cryptocurrencies and the dollar? And I said this one time, I'm going to say it again. The dollar is backed by a nation called the United States of America. And the dollar is backed by bullets. You can play this game if you want to and act like America ain't America. And you can play this game if you want to and act like if somebody messed with this currency, America ain't coming with bullets. But I have seen this country in terms of how it reacts to us as American DOS and everybody across the globe. And what I can say, America will be devastatingly harsh when it comes to the dollar. So to say that like this little thing that somebody made up as a currency, the same thing as this thing that's backed by the, that's backed by the most powerful military in the world, it is not the I same thing. I want to understand something. It's not just boys. We had another catastrophe, ladies and gentlemen. We had another catastrophe. It wasn't just boys. We had another bad, bad time. Child, the news caught up with Zaza Ali. And they said that she had she had a retreat. I'm sure she had sandstones, or or I don't know what they be doing. I don't know. I I don't know what the what the what the hotel women spirituality movement is. I don't know, but I know they said that she took the monies. They said that she took the monies, and and the people came out, and like um the people came out and. And, and it wasn't no thing. And, and she informed them, like this woman right here, 
was on the news and said she informed them the day before that like ain't gonna be no retreat because see it was a retreat see it was a retreat this was a retreat it was sold out it was sold out you say sold out you say yes yeah, sold out you say sold I'm gonna have a retreat and we're gonna wash on sandstones. We're gonna have speakers and I'm gonna, I'm gonna. She said her goal in the video. Go look up at CBS 46. Zaza Ali, look it up. She said her goal is to, child. What she say her goal was? She said her goal was to to elevate the the spirituality or, or consciousness of all humans. That's some kind of goal. That's some kind of goal, ladies and gentlemen. Now, here's what I'm saying about that. Well, why did Yvette bring Zaza into this? Well, because it's not a business. Because then the man on CBS 46 who just clowns you all the way, he said that, like, well, she was having money problems because what happens is it's not a business. So you were using some of that other money people sent in to pay other stuff you had to pay. You was robbing Peter to pay Paul, as Negroes call it, because it's not really a business. So... What happens is because you don't understand it's a business, you don't want, you, I don't know, you probably don't understand that these people need their money early. You need to pay them 30 days or 60 days or whatever your contract is. So you don't get the money. You got these people, yeah, we're going to be that girl. We're going to, but let me tell you something else. Liberation ain't going to come in sand crystals or none of that other stuff. That's not how we get the liberation, ladies and gentlemen. I'm sorry. You got to do real politics. We got to be a real collective. We can't be talking about energy and feeling our energy and having better energy and all of that stuff. We can't that's not that's not politics. That's not what we're doing. You've been out there robbing Peter. Well, she was they they said well she was having financial problems, and so she took this money and put it over here. You know how we do. Well, I'm gonna take this little bit for the gas bill, and I'm gonna take this little bit for the light, because they said they only need $85 for the light and they'll keep it on. But they said on the cable bill, they need six. I'm gonna put 60 over here, and then we're gonna pray on it. And that don't work in business, though, because business requires capital. It's not how you run your household. And then you got mad at the woman who called the news, but she's out of her money. And these people not just, were not just out of their money. They were out of, like, these people took days off and all kinds of stuff. And then you tell the woman, well, you go go run and tell that to your white reporter. You're not even humble enough to say, I failed. Like, I really messed up. Like, you, like, I don't know what y'all, I don't know what y'all doing out here. This is, but I tell you what, it ain't, it ain't business. Because you don't have the capital for business. So stop talking about you, you doing business. This is not business. This is like a little hustle. It's a little itty bitty hustle. But I think this hustle is about it. Then she said she was going to send one lady a refund. And the lady said she was happy because she saw the refund in her account. Then the refund bounced back. Child, I ain't never seen a refund and PayPal bounce back. The refund bounced back. The PayPal said, listen, she sent you a refund, but ain't no money in this account no more. So we got to take that back because we ain't, pay this is PayPal. We are in the business of charity. Child, and y'all let these people say they be running a business. A business, child. I don't understand what everybody's doing. Boyce Watkins is a failed businessman. He is a failed businessman. Well, what do you mean, Yvette, he's a failed businessman? He's doing business. No, I want you to go back and look at all the stuff he's been doing. Boyce has fallen off a lot, and that's why I wasn't even going to address it, because nobody really pays attention to him no way. He always says, we have sold out crowd. Negro, you had 20 people in there. It wasn't sold out. You know how I know? They called me and told me. So, here's the thing. It's funny to me. You keep telling me that I can't, you can't trust the white man, and in your video, the white man ain't going to never do right by you. But you told me. You telling me that the see you just got too much trust in the white man, but you were in business like, with Maven, they're buying right? Hope, and they're only using like a base level of features. If That's that makes good. any sense, like most people like don't get into like like let's say your training has it. like they don't use it. <laughs> yeah, they, they just like buy it to like feel good. So the thing too is you don't really need to actually educate them. You just got to show them how easy it is with like a little trick. First, we're trying to show that the system is broken, like the white overboss. So this is our right. white overboss. And then the second one is we're trying to fight against the gangbanger culture. So in this case, our character has also been cited as like a faggot and a bitch. You know, we don't say that. Voice, who's, you know, he's the main character. He's like the pitch guy. You know, he's my, uh, you know, info product guy. I was the black kid who wanted to be invited to the space of the white man, blah, 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 you know, close point. And actually, I was really excited because, you know, and, and this wasn't planned, 
but like when Boyce was actually pitching, he actually like like this became like an epiphany moment for him. Mm-hmm. And I have him on, you know, we're on like YouTube Live and the webinar and everything. You know, he's tearing up. Like he cries for a good thirty to forty five seconds. And it's awesome. That point, like literally like we spent like the, the presentation, we spent four minutes, like he just like broke down and was like he, he just couldn't keep himself together. And the customer response in terms of confidence at that time just completely blew up. And, 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 and I, I don't want to make it sound like it's completely manufactured or, well, I, I guess it, it somewhat is, but this was, you know, beyond my expectations. But, like, the phones or the online, you know, like, the orders started ringing in because, like, people were able to emotionally identify with the why. They were able to, experience that transition we go find like it sound it sounds to me like it went from a functional product up into an emotional product right oh, and, yeah. and, 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 and yeah. it's damn artists sound like i'm bernie made off of something i encourage you if you if you follow you know if you hang out and follow yvette carnell which which i mean if you're into that type of stuff then she's actually very bright because that's why i hired her because she's smart and you ask her like there's some real scammy stuff. Well, you know, I, I'll tell you what. Um, I think that I will say this. Yeah, you created a world of shit. Uh, you know, the videos, and um, you know, and, and uh, I had I had a lot of mixed emotions. I, you know, part of it was, you know, where did this shit come from? You know, why, why, why am I? Why was I used as a case study? You know, I, I didn't, I didn't agree to that, right? Um, uh, why? Are, is someone working that hard to paint uh, a certain picture? Um, you know, because the thing was, it's one thing if you see the thing is, I say enough, I say enough dumb shit to get myself into a lot of heat. I think that what it can be really frustrating is when something that somebody else said it comes back on you, and people want to connect that to you, right? Because I have the, you know, I've always had these people that that if they if they if I go and I shake hands with a terrorist, they want to say Dr. Boyce Watkins supports terrorism. Looking at the way I referred to uh, people, um, you know, it's, I, I guess the best way of looking at this is, right, you know, as a marketing, but a tech-based marketing systems guy that breaks things down, you know, I guess, and it doesn't make it right, but it's kind of like I've built this great race car, and I'm bragging to my friends about this, right? And I have stopped viewing the you know, ultimately my race car, I'm playing in the world of human emotions. I have basically let my, like looking at that, I'm looking at this, I'm like, geez, I have let my ego get the better of me because I'm showing off my brand new race car. And the problem here is I'm not talking about, you know, code or technology or anything. I'm actually talking about real people. Let's just get the information out there and then everybody can kind of decide how they feel about what they hear saying like we can't trust the white man to help us y'all always chasing the white man you chase the white man to maven you on the white man's youtube you have a business and it's not a business it's undercapitalized it's based on psychology it's no distribution no land no product just hey i can teach you how to be a million dollars i still got student loans i still got debt i still got a whole bunch of stuff but i can teach your kid how to be a millionaire how does that make sense right now and selling these little mastermind classes some managers you know right you can go look them up i've heard of a few i've read about a few just in the context of econo- economics they don't be on instagram all the time with the hat turned to the back talking about getting the bag they don't even really want to be seen they kind of just move now you had to get your crowdfunding but then you just start moving you need to be seen too much for me to trust you you need to be front and center too much you need to be puff daddy too much I don't need somebody like you to be in tr- I need somebody who doesn't want to be seen but wants to do the work. I don't need you always on your video talking about I do the work. I outwork the work. Don't you know I outwork the work? On hand. But you ain't never did nothing. But you can't hold my money. Bankrupt. You bankrupt. That's what the paperwork you file say you bankrupt. So how do how would I know? We're doing a lot of bad assessing in terms of who holds our money and who so I'm gonna let somebody who bankrupt. You ain't got no money, but I'm gonna let you hold my money. Well, I don't think you're gonna do with that white money. Pay, uh, you know, pay coons to do, which is to go out and attack black people who are trying to actually represent black people. 
Uh, so anyway, I, I, I thought, you know, and it's funny, like I, it's, it's real interesting when stuff like that happens, you'll have people that'll hit you up and they'll be like, <clears throat> hey man, you know, keep your head up, bro. It's going to be all right. You know, and, <laughs> and, and, you know, like they, they, like they feel bad for you. And I was like, no, actually, this is quite awesome. This is quite awesome. And I'm, and I'm going to break down for you why I think it's awesome. You know, clearly I've gotten under these Negroes nerves. You clearly, I'm in your head, ain't you? And, and I'm, I'm in your head right now. That's a fact, Jack. And so anyway, that's that. And, and, and so at the end of the day, if you want now, now here's the thing though. Now, if someone's running a scam or someone's doing something that's fake or shady or whatever, then you can ask, then you would have tens of thousands of former customers like Trump University. They'd be like, oh, I put money over there and I, I didn't get what I wanted. I put money in there and he, he ripped me off and no, nobody ever called me back. Go find people who can say that about the black business school. Anybody who's in this thread right now, right now, if you're in the black business school, I want you to just rep your flag right quick. Say something real quick and tell people about your experience. Please, I need your help. Because y'all know when the coons come attacking, they got the white man's guns behind them. They ain't got no gun because coons they don't know how to use weapons or, or, or create them. But they know how to take a weapon that's been handed to them by the white man to try to come out and, and, and boom, 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 boom. What's that nigga doing on that damn day? Like, that's what they know how to do. So if you are a student in the black business school, I would like for you to just tell the truth. Tell the truth. See, because people like this, they don't like truth. They like spin. They like innuendo. They like living off of racial stereotypes that basically say, if you are a black man and you run in a successful company, then you must be a motherfucking fraud. you got to be a scam because you know can't none of us get by without going to work for Massa. What classes were you taking that he was charging you for? <laughs> I'm just curious. Um... It was like some some business course. Like he had like he had so many courses. Uh, one was like um, for the franchise or something. How to how to become a franchise owner. Okay. And I was like, okay, but what am I gonna get a franchise? I don't even know what you're talking about. A Subway, a McDonald's. I mean something something profitable. Cause you know uh, you know I was like, well I don't yeah. know anything about business. Yeah. Maybe this you know this finance professor can teach me something about business. Uh, he may know something about finance, but you're right about business. I don't think so. Yeah, I, I, yeah. Well, thank you, Carla. I, I was it specific information about how to apply to a Subway versus a Chick Fil A. No, but, no, okay. No, okay. it was very, very broad, very. Because the franchises very are very basic, different. Um, save your money type stuff, kind of like what you were referencing. And I was like, well, I, I do this already, and I ain't no further than what. <laughs> 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 oh, thank you, yeah. Carla. I appreciate it. It, it was nothing. It, it was, was not, nothing. Yeah, it was and nothing. It was, just, it was just the way, like you said, to just. To just get your money and all that stuff, and I didn't. I knew better after that. Yeah. I knew better than to invest in them old foolish funky flash. But how much? I made my own flash card for nothing. School. I wasn't about to buy his. But how much did he charge? How much did he? But how much did he charge you for a month to, to teach you general franchise information? I want to say maybe it was like forty eight ninety nine. Fifty dollars a month. Fifty dollars a month. All right, fifty dollars a month. All right, thank you. I appreciate. I appreciate it when people call in with the real stuff, with the real business. Um, I appreciate you calling yeah, in. Yeah. You know, these programs, they cost too much. And, and basically, you you know, you, you can get this stuff on the Internet, and, and that, it, which isn't true. But there's actually proprietary information. We use proprietary technology that we had to license in order to do that because you, you don't understand what it means to run a company. Um, but, you know, the thing is, like, you know, it's sort of interesting that somebody will say that I have a problem with this Negro charging uh, people money to learn from him, even if it's like a couple hundred dollars a month, and you spend uh, you know, all that money with white folks, a hundred thousand dollars on a degree with white folks, and all that are all that degree got you, and in a fledgling career where no one really knows much about who you are, I probably am giving you more cred and more recognition right now by talking about you than you're able to get on your own, and and so you haven't questioned that, right? Like, like and that's what that's interesting about. The kind of the sambo mentality like i'm gonna go kill off this I'm, I'm, I'm gonna do my best to be paid by by white folks to go take out this this nigga that that is that that has a product that that costs two hundred dollars a month but yet i will not question 
the white people who charge me thirty, forty thousand dollars a year to give me a degree. I don't know what to say about that. Hello, this is Devin calling out of the DMV. Hey, Come on, Devin. Devin. That's the second DMV call, I think. What's going on? Hey, I know something you don't know about Mr. Watkins. I signed up for his Intelligent Boss Moves program with Damon Dash, and I paid $800. And I got ripped off. It was some time ago, but... We have a 97% customer satisfaction rating, which exceeds that of the greatest companies in America. Customer service is our number one priority. We ran another scale. My brother, he went to Cornell University, so he runs all these fancy indices to determine if our customers are happy or not. Our customer rating matched some of the best companies in America, like Apple, Southwest, etc. Okay. Anyways, did you know that Boyce Watkins, did you know that his, the from what I heard, that he sleeps with his female employees who work with him. Like, he's dated a number of them. He has them sign non-disclosure agreements. And the, the, the chick he was with, I don't know if you remember her, the Maria Lloyd chick or whatever, uh -huh. he dated her. She filed a lawsuit against him. And yeah, Maria, daughter, and Maria was good people. <laughs> Maria was good people. I, like, Maria was good people. I don't know, like, what people know, what people think. Maria's good people. Still, I say it was, but still... His own daughter has distanced herself from him because of his mm. shady business practices. And I heard the FBI is building a case against him, too. But that's all. I just want to put that out there. I appreciate you. I appreciate you. I appreciate you, Carla. I appreciate What you got all people right. out here? You got people out here signing non-disclosures, child, so they can't. And y'all don't even know, like, those non-disclosures the boys got you signing. They made them, having them things, you go see an attorney. Them things ain't even going, these might not even be enforceable in a court of law. Um, you know, even, I mean, think about that in terms of what we just talked about in terms of Fryer the other night, in terms of what he's doing and how he's wielding his power and how boys be doing all kind of stuff because it's not just, it's not just, it's not just like, we're not just talking about one person, two person. He got a whole bunch of stuff going on. And then, like, why are you, why are like so many of your employees women? Like, what are you up to? You know, but like, you know, like, there's a lot I could say. I ain't gonna say. <laughs> A payment. It was just more so like the aftermath of like how vicious he was. Like they literally have people threatening to physically assault me because I spoke out against him. So, oh wow! I'm thankful you haven't had to go. I'm sorry, huh? I said, oh wow. Yeah, like they're making. They're literally going on. Like they're they're trying. Like literally, I'm just waiting until somebody like knocks on my door because I have a lot of inside information on him from like women that he's dated who used to work for him, and I just have a lot of information. So he's been like sending people to make slanderous videos about me. People that have absolutely nothing to do with the situation. They have no proof. They have nothing. They're just speaking. But um, you know, I'm just shocked that he hasn't gone that far with you. But I really think that they try to just scare me so that I'll be silent but you know people like you and I don't speak out more people are going to be harmed you to physically attack me simply because I'm trying to warn other black people man get the hell up out of here Joe weak ass seriously I'm tired of weak black people I just I just can't I just, I just don't have patience for it I'm sorry I have no patience for it seriously if you don't like something again I maybe it's because I was raised by a real man My my daddy was a real motherfucking man who has killed people, um, who overcame a, a, a heroin addiction at the age of 18, not because he went to the clinic and did methadone and got free needles like they're giving white people now. He got over it because he realized that if he wanted to be a strong man, he needed to kick that shit. He needed to walk away from drugs and all that stuff. Um, my father is the kind of man who will tell me that if you in a situation and you ain't being respected, and if all you know how to do is cry, then you ain't never going to get no respect from nobody. You ain't never going to get acknowledged by nobody. You will always get the scraps and the crumbs that are left over after your oppressor or your bully decides that they've had their way with you. Now we found a new nigga next year, like E-40 used to say in his song. Remember that song? E-40 had a song called They'll Find a New Nigga Next Year. And, and, and you won't be the hot nigga on, on, online no more because you don't own nothing. That's the truth. So. Like, and, 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 and you know, you know, you know, think about what, what Paris just said and think about what she just said about like, 
you're in a position to like have somebody come on YouTube and and say all this stuff. And do it. You could have you could have just paid her the money. You could have just paid her the money. What the fuck are you doing? Now what?